Hello Tech Pros, episode 245. Just be proactive. Be proactive in terms of making sure that you have your, your ABCs of business in place and, and don't wait until something bad happens before you find the need to scramble uh, and to address it. Welcome to the podcast where we explore the opportunities, challenges, and anxieties that technical professionals and techpreneurs face when building their career, building their products, and building their business. This show is about the people behind technology and the mindsets and skill sets they developed that led to their success. You can learn more about this podcast and our guests at hellotechpros.com and about overcoming social anxiety at anxietynerd.com. All right, let's get started. Hello, Tech Pros. This is Chad Bostic, and I'm excited to introduce our featured guest today, Radiance Harris. Happy Wednesday, Radiance. Happy Wednesday, Chad. Are you ready to lead us through this conversation? Yes, I'm very excited <laughs> to be here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. You bet. I'm excited to have you. Radiance Harris is the founder and managing attorney of Radiance IP Law. She provides outside general counsel services to startups with an emphasis on trademark law, copyright law, advertising law, and business contracts. She takes care of the day-to-day legal matters for startups so that they can focus on doing what they love and have peace of mind about the rest. Oh my gosh, Radiance, this is a miracle. This is amazing because I've got so much going on in my little uh, startup business right now. And <laughs> I'm so lost with what, what I should be doing uh, legally to, to protect myself, to protect my property, um, you know, as well as to provide the best services to my customers and my clients and my audience and my partners. And, and I'm so excited to talk you, to you about this stuff because I think there's a lot of the audience members out here who are exactly where I am today. And that is, you know what, they have come from probably a corporate background where they where they worked as an employee for somebody else and they didn't have to worry about the legal matters other than, you know, just kind of following the corporate policies and stuff. But as you move into the op- entrepreneurship world, you just like, you got to wear a thousand different hats. And one of the right. hats that I, I can't wear is like a legal professional. I have absolutely no <laughs> skills or training or education there whatsoever. However, I know I need to have like privacy policies on my website and I need to have like trademarks for my things. So, uh, yeah, there's, it's so confusing (laughs) and I don't know where to start. So I thought maybe on this topic, you know, we're talking about being a leader as an entrepreneur, being a leader in your business on, on leadership Wednesday. And, um, it's, it's about setting the roadmap, right. And setting the direction for our team and our company of where we want to go and, and how we're going to work in the universe. Right. And, and so maybe you could coach us through, um, this aspect of like, do we be proactive and we go ahead and get an attorney right from the start and we put all these things in place or do we be reactive and we kind of just wait for situations to play out and then wait for like somebody to want to do a deal with us and then we're like okay i guess i need to like figure out how to build a contract or something you know we right. wait to we wait to build a privacy policy until <laughs> like last night when i was submitting things to twitter and they were like hey i need to link to your privacy policy and i'm like yeah about that let me see if i can copy and pay something from somebody else's site. So maybe you can Uh-oh. help us through, um, as a leader, what do we need to do to protect ourselves, protect our business, protect our interests as we're building out our business? Sure. Well, you know, as you probably know, a poor leader waits until something bad happens. Hmm. A-, a poor leader I've never also- done that. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> maybe there might be one audience member out there who's like, no, <laughs> No, a poor leader also thinks that they, they do not need to speak to or hire an attorney until they get in trouble. And, you mm-hmm. know, while I can agree and say that maybe that's the case for non-business related matters. So, you know, such as like criminal law or family law, where you have to kind of get into an issue before you seek out an attorney in those areas. In the context of business, if you are starting, maintaining and growing a business, you should have a trusted legal advisor from the outset. And essentially a good leader understands that legal is a necessary expense and should be taken into account in your business budget. And then a good leader also is proactive and takes the necessary steps to ensure that their business is protected and covered and also that they have access 
to a team and resources in the event that something bad does happen. And while I understand that, you know, at the very beginning, it can be very overwhelming about all these things that you are doing. And that's why it's particularly important to identify a trusted legal advisor who you can go to from the outset so that you know can and, get, and can get your ducks in a row from the beginning instead of scrambling when something happens. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. My my stepdad is an attorney, and he has nothing to do with like um, IPs. He's more like defense attorney kind of stuff. And um, when right when he was finishing school, or right when he had gotten out of school, and I was uh, early twenties, and I was talking to him about me and my roommate wanted to start a an internet cafe. This was way back in the <laughs> a long time ago when <laughs> to, to get broadband access, right? To get high speed internet access was really, really expensive. And so most people didn't have it. And so you had to like go to a business. You had to go to like somebody's work where they had paid thousands of dollars every month in order to get high speed internet access because you didn't have DSL and, and cable at home, right? And so we're like, okay, if we did this and we had food and drinks and just like hang out and people could use our use our internet um then we think this would be a good business idea and so we started you know doing a lot of research or like really talking about it really putting budgets and plans in place and i went to my stepdad and said hey what at what point in starting this business do we need to get a lawyer and he said chad if uh -huh. you um if you are asking that question you're already too late and i was like oh uh oh he goes what happens if if your roommate your buddy your friend goes out and takes this idea and sells it to somebody else and he sells it for five hundred thousand dollars now right. how much of that are you gonna get today and i'm like uh half and he's like no right. you you're not gonna get anything because no, there's nothing in writing there's no contract <laughs> there's nothing and i got so depressed i was like i don't even want to work on this now right because i'm afraid and and all this kind of it's right. overwhelming it's completely overwhelming so yeah what what do we what do we do okay we want to be proactive we want to do the right thing mm -hmm. but where should we start like when in the point of starting our business or working on our app we got a lot of software developers out there who are mm -hmm. you know building new apps and building new websites at what point in that journey do we say okay i need to go find an attorney and get them involved sure so at the very almost the very beginning um while i understand that you know you might not have a lot of money at the be beginning to invest in a, in a whole lot of legal work, it is advantageous to you to at least speak to an attorney to identify what it is that you need to do to ensure that your legal house is in order. So a very good start is like sort of, you know, from the beginning stage, what you do is sort of identify what are your business goals over the next six months to a year. So literally brainstorm, what are, what am I trying to do in this six month to a year phase? Are you gonna launch a new product, service, or a location? Are you looking to hire new employees? Are you rebranding? What changes are you trying to make? And then by do, once you have that in order, then it's good to then seek out someone who can advise you as to what are some potential things that you need to be aware of. Um, because, you know, the thing about being a leader is that it's important to stay ahead of the game to minimize any potential fire drills. So, you know, at the same time, I know you're under you, a lot of business owners are so focused on growing their business that they do not have the time to stay ahead of the game. So mm -hmm. that's where a lot of times it's very beneficial from a cost and time standpoint to find someone who can help ease the load, so to speak. Because I know like even for me, because I'm also an entrepreneur with my practice, that I stay in my lane. I know what I'm good at doing and I focus on that. The things that I'm not good at doing, I outsource. And so that's an important thing to keep in mind and that don't try to be a jack of all trades with your business. It's important to hire the people and have them in place to ensure that your your ducks are in a row. And I was having a conversation earlier this week um, with a, a colleague and we were talking about sort of the, do you have your ABCs, the ABCs of business? Do you have an attorney? Do you have a banker? And do you have a CPA? If you are a business owner and don't have those th three things, meaning trusted advisors in those three categories, I would definitely encourage you to do so because legal and finances 
are the most important aspects of any business because both of those areas have the potential to wreak havoc if things go south. Mm. Yeah, it's it's so scary, right? Especially there's so many of us who come from a technical hands-on background, right? We we have been software developers, server engineers, network engineers, um, database administrators, right? And then moving into this right. area where we need some 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 entities in place, some people in place, trusted advisors, as you said, to help us out in the ABCs of business where we're probably in many cases, not very strong, right? So we're right. really strong at the technical aspect of, of doing the job and getting the job done. But then there's, on one hand, the marketing side and the CEO side of growing mm-hmm. the business, and then all the administrative and legal side of keeping it running, right? So right. it's like it's like we have to balance ourselves and balance our time and balance our money on where we're going to make these investments, right? So maybe just right. kick us off with... Why is it so important? Why is it so important to make sure that we have, um, specifically, if we if we talk about IP law and attorneys, mm-hmm. like why is it so important to have from the very beginning an attorney in place to help us, like with the formation of the business and and everything that we need to do? Sure, I mean it's important to to have an attorney to to help you with those things um, because you know especially if you're working with someone who is experienced. So if you are seeking out an attorney, go with someone who is experienced in the area that you need help with versus a a jack of all trades attorney is is never a good thing. Um, But it's it's very important to get that stuff in order because like, for example, business formation to have either an LLC or a corporation where you are protecting your personal assets from your business assets. And so the problem with sort of doing business and commingling your personal funds with your business funds is that then you are uh, sort of annihilating that liability shield that in the event that if something were to happen, that now your personal assets could be potentially seized or garnered, um, resulting from a legal dispute. So business formation is definitely very important for that reason in, in terms of maintaining the, the, corporate, the corporate shield. Um, as for protecting your intellectual property rights, and, when, and for those who don't know the sort of the term intellectual property rights, it basically covers four categories. It covers trademarks, which are essentially your company name, your slogans, your logos, your product or service names. Then you've got copyright, which is a category that protects the tangible expression of ideas. So books, videos, um, music, things like that in tangible form. And then you've also have patents, which protects inventions. And then lastly, you've got trade secrets, which protects information that should be made confidential and kept under wraps with the company. So when you think of like, for example, the Coca-Cola formula, that's a Mm. trade secret. And so all of these categories have immense value to a company. Like the, your intellectual property is just as significant as it, you know, your home, the real estate that you own, whether it's a home, a car, a boat, this is the value of your intellectual property. Now it could be a little bit, it could only be worth a little bit when you start out, or it can be, end up being massive intellectual property as we have, you know, as we see with Apple, for example, where that they start, you know, Apple is a company that started in, in a garage and now it's got all of this massive intellectual property rights. But in order for it to even become that very valuable asset, it's very important for you to protect it at the beginning, at the outset, to ensure that it's protected on a nationwide level, to ensure that you're, you're enforcing your rights of anybody who may be potentially infringing on those rights. So, you know, it, it's a very important asset that is equivalent to money, that it's valuable money for a business. And so it should be really taken uh, seriously in terms of a, an important investment in, in the overall business scheme. Gotcha. So on, on a prior episode of Hello Tech Pros, we talked to um, another IP lawyer about really getting into like the on the software development side so how do we how do we come up with the eulas and the terms of agreement and and how do we know what types of like open source code that we can include in our projects and stuff like that so if we shift to maybe a different type of technical entrepreneur 
Um, and that is folks who are starting with kind of publishing media like myself, right? So you have sure. bloggers and you have podcasters and you, I've got a lot of friends doing video stuff on YouTube. Yeah. Is that stuff considered um, like, do we need trademarks and copyrights on that, patents on that? What, what do we need in, in the area where we're publishing some sort of media, our spoken voice or a written word out publicly on the internet? Sure. So you well, essentially you'll have um, trademark rights in the the name of the of the product or service that you're giving. So that's that's something that is a valuable asset in terms of the actual recording. So you've got, you know, your podcast or you might have videos or um, sort of visual content. All of that is subject to copyright protection. And so it's important to, to be mindful of that. And then on another layer, layer is sort of the advertising guidelines. So you've got um, the Federal Trade Commission advertising guidelines as well as, as, as well as state rules that govern sort of advertising. So in terms of like if you've got a sponsor, for example, to have to convey that to your audience, whether it's on a podcast or in social media, or if you're being paid to endorse a product, that's something that needs to be shared with the public as well. And so those are certain sort of considerations that a lot of content developers aren't aware of from a, from a legal standpoint. Okay, so let's get a, a specific example of maybe a disclaimer that we need to provide to our audience, whether it's it's on a blog or on a podcast or on a video. What what is an example of what that would look like or sound like, so that you know we're being completely transparent, but uh, it's it's not overwhelming. So what does that look like? Sure. So for example, so say if you had the, the podcast, it would be essentially just a statement at the beginning, like, you know, this, this podcast brought to you by X, Y, and Z, or this podcast is sponsored by whomever. You might also include um, written language as in on the actual site where you're posting the podcast. And the same thing would happen, for example, a blog where at the, at the, at the top, uh, before you even start writing the content, you just kind of make it clear that this, you know, this blog post is um, sponsored. But the I was basically you're paid to give your give your honest opinion. So you can say that you've been sponsored, but I'm giving my honest opinion on this um, restaurant or on this product. Mm -hmm. um, as for on social media, where you have like a limited characters, such as, for example, if you've got social media and you've got as well as, um, I'm, I'm sorry, Instagram, Twitter, things like that on social media, making it clear in those posts that it's, it's sponsored content. So you can say, for example, a sponsored post and then include whatever it is. You can include hashtags that say sponsored, endorsed endorsement, things like that, to make it clear to the readers that you've been paid for this, but you're, you know, so that's what it's all about is just sort of not being misleading and being truthful in your advertising and in your presentation to your viewers, your readers, your subscribers. Okay, so it doesn't sound like it's anything very onerous or anything no. like huge is going to take over. Nope. Um, it's just like a little blur, it's, just like a quick, like, hey, full what, transparency, this is the thing. Exactly. And that's what it's about, just being transparent. So, like, if you are being paid or you are being sponsored, just to make that very clear to the viewers, to the, the subscribers. So it doesn't require a lot of overhaul or heavy lifting. You can even include, you can have the similar language across the board that you want to use across all of your content, but typically that's that's what you'll you'll want, like a, a quick sentence or two just that clearly explains the relationship between you and the sponsor or the endorser. Got it. So in, in all these areas, whether we're, we're filing for trademarks or we're putting copyrights or we're putting disclaimers about our advertising, 
Like, what are some of the potential vulnerabilities and risks if we kind of ignore all this stuff? We're like, hey, I'm bootstrapping this. You know, it's just kind of a side thing. I've got my day job. I'm just trying to do this on the side. So I don't really have the money, you know, to work, uh, to spend all the, for the bankers and the attorneys and the, everything else. I just want to, like, get it off the ground, get it running, and and really prove out my concept, right? Build this proof of concept, put it out there in the world, and see if it sticks before I invest in all these uh, all these other professionals that I need to hire. So what are the vulnerabilities and risks if we if we take that approach? The approach with that, that approach essentially is like, well, if you don't want to spend your money now, then you just be prepared to spend it in the future. Um, and so the way that you can think about your business is that think of it, for example, with car insurance. So you're, you're riding around town, you can either not have car insurance or you can have car insurance. And the thing about it is that when you do get in an accident, you're like, thank God I have car insurance. (laughs) But when you get in an accident and you don't have car insurance, you're going to be like, man, I wish I had car insurance. And so it's almost Mm. like when you have um, investing in legal, it's essentially like insurance for your business. It's a way to make sure that you are covered and and protected. And so, you know, when you get in trouble in terms of of your business, you know, you're not necessarily going to go to jail per se, but you have the potential to lose a lot of time and money that takes away from you being able to protect and grow your, your business. And so, you know, some, some things that I see that a number of, you know, startups do is that they, they have these contracts in place that haven't been pre- prepared or reviewed by attorneys to ensure that their company's rights are and interests are protected. And so kind of the example you gave or, um, about, you know, not having privacy policies in place or, terms and conditions on your website. And so things like that are important. So for example, the terms and conditions on your website. Now that's not necessarily required by law, but it's a very um, important business practice in the sense that anyone who comes to your website and interacts with you or makes a purchase on your website, essentially they will be agreeing to the terms and conditions on your website. So essentially you are making a clear written statement about sort of the expectations of visiting your website, using the content, purchasing anything from your website. And so that protects you in the sense that it's making it clear what, who owns the IP here? What are the expectations in terms of refunds or exchanges? It just kind of lays out as if you have a contract with anybody and everybody who comes to your website. On the flip side, you've got like the privacy policy which is required by law. Every single business website needs to have a privacy policy by law because essentially what that does, it, it, it allows anyone who comes to your website to understand what information of theirs is being collected, whether it's their name, their address, their home address, their credit card information. So what's being collected from them? Are cookies being placed on their computers when they visit their website? you know, for tracking purposes so that people have a right to know what information is being collected and how it's being used. And that's what a privacy policy does. And so every website um, should definitely have a terms and conditions as well as a privacy policy. And so the problem with not having things like that on your website is that, yeah, you could go probably many years with probably no, no issues, but there's that one person who comes to your website and, you know, does something that, potentially you can't, um, you'll have to end up hiring an attorney to defend against because you didn't have any clear terms that expe- that spelled out the expectations in terms of your, your business dealings. Um, and there's also issues with, for example, if you start bringing on employees, definitely if you start bringing on employees, um, you want to make sure that you, you speak to an attorney to make sure that you're following employment laws with that and making sure that you have internal policies in place as far as like, what are your social media policies? A lot of times people are hiring employees to, to work with their social media and, right. but they're not making it clear sort of what are the expectations or guidelines for employees using social media, you know, the company's social media. And that's the thing that employee could depend, potentially get the company in serious trouble because there are mm-hmm. no simple guidelines that spell out what are the expectations or what, what are the do's and don'ts. Um, in terms of dealing with social media. So those are just kind of a few in a nutshell. I could, I can go all day long about these things, but those are just a, a few examples. 
Oh, yeah. I, I feel you about the social media one. Uh, I, I worked for a sports entertainment company. I won't say which one. Um, but last year, you might have heard some of the news about these uh, sports entertainment companies that are uh, that are maybe gambling, maybe not, right? That's for the, the attorneys to kind of figure out and, and the prosecutors to figure uh-huh. out. But there was a moment on social media where one of the employees from one of the two major companies uh, posted something, and later that day, he won a major comp uh, won a major competition, like hundreds of thousands of dollars from the competing company, and it is just like blew up into what what is going on in in between these two companies, right? right? And luckily, they had the budgets to kind of handle you know handle those uh, the legal fallouts, mm-hmm. but it's absolutely something that. It needs to be very, very clear up front on how employees, uh, what are the expectations of the employees. That's probably a huge, huge topic that we could spend like hours and hours on. So so tell you what, in just a moment, when we come back from our commercial break from this very important sponsored commercial break, (laughs) (laughs) clear transparency, Chad wants to get paid for this. Um when we come back, let's talk about maybe um, like specifically how we get started and how we identify the best team members for our needs. Because as you said before, like, you know, we don't want a generic person. We want a person who's going to cover our specific needs. Right. So first of all, kind of break it down, what needs that we have, and then how to find the best team members to solve that need. We'll do that in just a moment. But first, we'll take a quick break and thank our advertising sponsors. <laughs> This episode of Hello Tech Pros is sponsored by you, the audience. Instead of looking for new corporate sponsors, I've decided to adopt a pay per value model. What that means is you decide on how much I get paid. If you're just browsing and have yet to get value out of the show, don't feel obligated to pay a darn thing. However, if this podcast does its intended job of helping you build your career, build your products, or build your business, consider becoming a sponsor on Patreon. Pick the level of recurring donation that matches the level of value you get out of this show or make a one-time sponsorship for that big aha moment that have helped turn things around for you. Become a sponsor today at patreon.com slash hellotechpros or visit hellotechpros.com slash sponsor. Okay, we're back with Radiance Harris. Radiance is the founder and managing attorney of Radiance IP Law, and we've been talking to Radiance about as an entrepreneur, as a technical entrepreneur who's starting your business, like what are the things that you need to have in place? And it really comes down to the ABCs of business, right? The attorney, the banker, the CEPA, you need to have all those things in place. And the reason why you need to have all those things in place is kind of like car insurance. It's like you <laughs> want to have that in place before you get into a lot of trouble. Because what happens if... Who knows, a month from now, a week from now, 10 years from now, that one customer or that one business deal, that one partner, that one employee, something happens and it turns into a huge, big legal mess and you had no records, you had no guidance from the very beginning, um, you're probably going to end up costing a lot, right? You're going to be paying out a lot. So. Radiance, how do we get started? And, and and specifically, right? So at the beginning you said we need to have we need to have the right team members in place. You don't want to find just like a generic uh, um a general counsel lawyer that that kind of covers a little bit of everything, mm-hmm. jack of all trades. Since we all have different businesses, sometimes we're selling products, sometimes we're selling services, sometimes we're building apps and software, sometimes we're doing uh content-based businesses and advertising. So how do we find the best fit for for our specific business needs? Sure. I mean, so it, at first you need to identify and I think I mentioned this earlier just overall like what are your what are your business goals? Like where do you see your business going? Like do you want mm-hmm. your business to be sort of the next are you striving for it to be like the next Fortune 200 company or do you kind of just want it to be um, you know, just a little local, like mom and pop kind of thing. Lifestyle business. I think yeah. most of the time, like- yeah, I would think most of the time, if you are one of those that want to see your business grow to uh, an immense level, it's important to have the right team behind you. And so that a good start is identifying your goals. And I would say usually a six month to a year goal is good and just kind of tackling them sort of in a mini by mini because your, te- your your needs are going to change over time. And so if you're looking at it from perspective of six months to a year, then you can kind of put in know what team members you need to have in place to to move forward. And so, you know, most times 
businesses have, you know, they have their CEO and they have their CFO and then they might have um, the marketing person or they might have, you know, it, it, it can vary from business to business. So it's kind of hard to say what every what what are some team members that every business needs. But I what I can say from from my perspective as an attorney, I think in terms of your early early hirings as a business that an, an attorney is is one of those because for example for when the for the clients that i work with uh, not only do i serve as their trusted legal advisor so guiding them along the way as they move forward and in, in their business growth but i also serve as a brand marketing and advertising consultant and i'm also a strategic business partner for them so it's almost like they get the best of Three, they get three, like you said, two kill, kill two birds with one stone with me in the mm-hmm. sense that you've got, you've got more than just a legal advisor. And I think if pe- more people realize that attorneys can bring more than, to the table than, uh, than just being an attorney, that they would understand the importance of having someone on their team like that in the, in the outset. Um, and so like for me, I, and, you know, and I understand sort of the stereotypes that come with with attorneys. You know, a lot of times people say attorneys are uh, expensive. They're just trying to take your money. You know, all of these sort of mm-hmm. negative things uh, about attorneys. But I do want to say that there are some good guys out there and, and I'm one of those. And, and what my clients love about working with me is that I do a flat fee rate, you know, flat fees. So no hourly billing. And, and I work as an extended member of their business team and I can handle their day-to-day legal fair, uh, legal affairs. And, and guess what? It's at the a, a fraction of the cost um, and without the hassle of having to pay for the full salary, taxes, and health benefits of another full-time employee. So I, I just encourage people to think about who, who it is that they need to b- bring on their team. And again, this could be this could vary from business to business in terms of who are, are important key players to have. But sometimes it might be smart to not necessarily hire a full-time employee, but having these sort of outsourced uh, professionals who function as an extended member of your team where you can manage the budget, so to speak. So in, in my situation, my clients already know from month to month what they're going to pay to have me on their team, which is significantly less than if they were to hire me or someone else as a full-time attorney on their team. So I just encourage business owners to think outside the box when they do identify who they need at this juncture in their business, maybe it's not necessarily um, cost and benefit to cost from a cost standpoint, beneficial to hire someone full time, but perhaps outsourcing them, but having a, an ongoing relationship with them. So that way they, their needs are covered, but they don't have to invest uh, so much time, so much money in having a full time employee on staff. Right. And the big, biggest thing I took out of that is just have that consultation at the very, very beginning and just say, hey, this is my plan, right? Exactly what you said, Radiance. This is my business plan. This is where I want to go. Here's where I'm at now, right? I have nothing. And in six months from now, I plan to have X, Y, Z. Right. Or I am already starting with something that I'm, I'm taking into the business and and I'm trying to grow it and, and make something out of it, right? But here's where we are. Let's have a conversation about what I need. And can you provide those resources or can you point me in the direction that can provide me those resources right and so like it's it's not one size fits all it's every single case is different and you got to put that professional in place that counsel that can tell you you know probably what you need or or some of the options that are out there that may be applicable to you and having that conversation is is i would hope free right Mm -hmm. at the beginning of just like hey what what do I need? And, and, uh, just give me a little bit of guidance on kind of ballpark and what, what am I in for here before we get too far down the line? Exactly. Cool. So as we wrap this up, do you have any final words of wisdom to share for our audience, um, about IP law or, or any of the other topics that we've talked about today and then share the best way that we can connect with you and talk to you about our legal needs, and then we'll say goodbye. Sure. Um, So my last final nugget would be to just be proactive. Be proactive in terms of making sure that you have your your ABCs of business in place, and, and don't wait until something bad happens before you find the need to scramble 
uh, and to address it. And so uh, I can be found. My website is www.radianceiplaw.com. That's R-A-D-I-A-N-C-E, just like the word radianceiplaw.com. <laughs> uh, on social media, I can be found uh, at Radiance Harris on Instagram and Twitter. And I'm also on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Radiance IP Law. Radiance, thank you so much for joining me on Hello Tech Pros today. I really value this discussion because it's something that can be scary. And for a lot of folks, if it's scary, it's like, oh, stay away from it. Like, I don't, I don't want to deal with this. But it is needed. And we do need to have the discussion. We need to create that awareness um, because more and more people are starting their own businesses as they're determining, you know what, I don't want to be uh, I don't want to be a full-time employee for the, all of my life. I want to get out there. I want to create something. The internet and, and the the world we live in today is just a great place um, to start a business, and there's no better time to do it. So if you're going to do it, you might as well do it right and uh, and have a, have a good legal partner in place um, from the very beginning. So thanks for sharing that with us today. Oh, you're welcome. This was fun, Chad. Thank you. Cool. Tech pros, if you are in a position where you have something on the side or you're building your business, if you haven't already talked to an attorney, at least have the conversation. Call Radiance or, or find somebody else local that you can talk to and say, you know what, I just want to get clear on, on just what my particular risks are. And it's all about risk avoidance, right? You, It's just like insurance. It's just like anything else, right? If, if, Something bad were to happen, how much is it going to cost you? Um, do you really want to pay that? Do you want to lose like literally the home that you live in because you don't have a separation between uh, your personal and your business, right? There's, there's a lot of things to consider, and, and uh, hopefully everything's good, but not everything's always good. <laughs> Just keep yourself protected. Exactly. You've been listening to Radiance Harris, and I'm Chad Bostic. And until next time, take care. The show notes page for this episode can be found at hellotechpros.com slash 245. Do you use Slack for team communication? Join the Hello Tech Pros Slack channel at hellotechpros.com slash Slack. If this episode helped you out in any way, please leave a review on iTunes and let me know what you thought. iTunes reviews helps our rankings, which helps us grow the Hello Tech Pros podcast to a broader audience, which helps more technical professionals and techpreneurs build their career, build their products, and build their businesses. If you are a subscriber and get repeat value out of this show, consider becoming a sponsor on Patreon. The information on this podcast is free to everyone, but I'm giving you the opportunity to pay for the value you get out of it, starting as little as a dollar a month. Pledge your support today at patreon.com slash hellotechpros or visit hellotechpros.com slash sponsor.